Actors who went broke in the stupidest ways. All right, well, obviously Johnny Depp's on this list because it's been shown his face. Who else do we think's going to be on this list? I feel like there's a lot of, like, pro athletes that went broke in dumb ways. And rappers. It's, it's going to be rappers and sports players. Like, NBA, NFL, baseball. I feel like... 100% MLB. Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is broke. Isn't Nicolas Cage like a prominent actor? The pink sauce lady. 360 grand a year on wine bottles. What? Johnny Depp was spending 360 grand a year on wine bottles. <laughs> Yo, no f way. 360k a year on wine is crazy. And not only does he have to be slugging back wine, he's got to be buying like fucking 10k, 10k bottles. Well, Nicholas Cage's bankruptcy oh. included nine Rolls Royces and his own See, like what? Why, why? I don't. I don't understand the purpose of having more than one. Private island. However, there are a few actor bankruptcies stranger than Kim Bassinger's, who thought it was smart to pay twenty million dollars for an entire country town. Brusselton, Georgia, had only two shops and five hundred local residents. One of which describing the town by stating, "Breading chicken is about the most exciting thing we do around here," which made the reason for Kim's purchase even more stupid. She planned on turning the town into a Hollywood tourist attraction by building a major film and recording studio oh. with the added bonus of a theme park home. A theme park? In the middle of nowhere? I was gonna say, maybe you buy that sh and keep it as property to resell. Because, like, I know there's a lot of famous rich people that buy property in, like, Montana and Wyoming and Nebraska and places where it's just land. Because, like, those are the places that people want to have because it's just, like, nature-y and it's not filled with city sh Homes and shopping centers. At a time when Brasselton's economic conditions were so atrocious, another local resident stated, if we talk about the economy, everybody gets depressed. Given the real Hollywood was on the other side of the country, it's no surprise that the pro to resell the town for 4.3 million, locking in a $15.7 million loss, and the alienation of her entire family who'd also bought into the project. The stress from the town's failure then caused Kim to pull out of a movie she was starring in. Who is Kim Bassinger? I've never heard of this woman in my life. Prompting the producers to successfully sue her for $8.9 oh. which Kim couldn't pay. You had to declare bankruptcy. You made everything and then lost everything. Lost everything. Every single thing. But at least Kim Bassinger still had her freedom, as Wesley Snipes' bankruptcy was so brutal, it also put him in prison. He'd earned over $50 million from a range of different roles, although despite purchasing- losing 50 mil is like a struggle. They had to have no financial advisor. No financial advisor, no accountant, nothing. Because somebody along the way had to be like, bro, I don't know if spending $20 million on this is a good idea. Purchasing an Aston Martin Vanquish, as well as mansions in both Florida and New Jersey, Jersey. Wesley refused. Oh my God. See, that's your problem there, man. You're buying a mansion in New Jersey. To lodge a single tax return over a seven year period and was therefore ordered to pay the IRS $23.5 million. Ooh. Wesley tried to wiggle his way out of paying by making the strange claim that he was a non resident alien of the United States. God, thank God Twitch streamers don't have to pay taxes. Am I right, chat? On there. He knew he had to pay the taxes. Uh -huh. He was just trying to find ways to avoid them. Although things got a whole lot weirder when Snipes declared he had no taxable. U.S. income, making the IRS Form 1040 absolutely the wrong form for me to file. He also claimed taxes withheld were stolen funds. Nah, the one thing I'm gonna say, okay, this is just stupid. The one thing I'm gonna say, though, is why the hell in the United States do we have to figure out how much we owe and the government won't tell us, only to come and yap at us if we pay the wrong amount? I don't, I don't understand that. I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm trying to fucking figure out what I I O, and then a year later they'll be like, Marm, Marm, "You're actually a little bit off," and then they bitch at you. TurboTax dog, bro. I'm not. Yeah, TurboTax. Yeah, whatever. Like you could use fucking platforms that that help you with taxation. But I'm saying, why do we? Why do you even need that? Whilst adding the IRS to saves people to terrorize and slave. Somebody just said, "What is a tax?" Bro, no way. Rape or pillage taxpayers. Although confronting the IRS was a very stupid strategy, as Wesley was immediately charged with six counts of willfully failing to file federal income tax returns, for which he was given a federal prison sentence. Wesley Snipes gets three years behind bars. In 2018, five years after being released from prison, Wesley Snipes- Three years behind bars for not paying $28 million in taxes?
Mm. I've still had not paid a dollar toward his tax bill and would try to oh, sell- Oh, he still has to pay it? Oh, I thought it was like, you're going to spend three years in prison and then it's like, okay, you don't got to pay it anymore. $5 million debt by instead offering the IRS $842,000, which wow. they understandably rejected. Dude, I'm starting to bargain with the IRS. All right, what if I give you $1 million? Bet you I was 23. Understandably rejected. Wesley then tried arguing economic hardship, but the court said no to that too, instead dropping his tax bill to 9.5 million, which it seems he hasn't paid either. Avoiding a tax bill for 15 years might almost make him a genius. However, when Heidi Montag blew through $10 million, there was zero- oh, God, chat, I'm kind of getting thirsty here. If only I had something to, uh, if only I had- I had some flavored water, you know, something to make it, you know, more interesting. Oh my gosh. Is that, is that an, is that an era bottle? Oh, it's weird. I, I also have, I also have uh, a bottle here already pre-prepared silver one, you know, special bottle. Iced tea peach. It's very simple chat here. You know, use it the other day. A little pod, I believe it's called. Slide that on. Now it's off. Pull it up. Now it's on. Oh my gosh. And you get a little taste of, get a little taste of iced tea peach. Where do I get it? Oh, that, now we'll transition into the actual ad read. Thanks for that transition, me. Uh, Air Up is honestly, uh, great. I, I, I use it every stream now since I got it. This steel bottle is actually amazing too. It keeps the water really cool. You know, it adds flavor to the water. It's not going to be some overwhelming flavor. It just, it flavors it through scent. Your olfactory system perceives the scent as flavor. And so whatever flavor pod you use, which they have a bunch, iced tea, peach, orange, vanilla, swirl, peach, they have a million flavors. Uh, and the one that you put on, uh, is the flavor that you're going to get through your olfactory system. It's honestly, uh, pretty cool how it actually works. Just looked it up. They have 15 different flavors all of them are zero calories because it's air if you want to try it out link in description check out air up get a bottle get some flavor pods see which one's your favorite thank you to air up for sponsoring this video let's get back into it in the hills big brother and i'm a celebrity get me out of here big brother fire show used to be used to be obsessed with that yeah although when these types of shows completely disappeared heidi instead began recording music spending two million dollars on her very first like Every other influencer ever. Oh, maybe I should, maybe I should, maybe I'd be a good singer. Oh, maybe I, maybe I could rap. I've never rapped a day in my life. Maybe I, maybe I could do, maybe I could be the next Drake. First album. She'd state, I put every dollar I have into this. I've spent over one million, almost. All right, guys, check out my new song called Wet Farts. Out now on uh, on SoundCloud and Spotify. Album. It's cost as much or more than a Britney Spears album because I wanted it to be that quality. The songs will make an impact in pop history. It sold only a thousand copies. In case Ooh. losing two million dollars on a worthless album wasn't bad $2 enough. Two million dollars to sell a thousand copies is fucking brutal. She'd talk about her daily life by stating, every time we'd go out to eat, we'd order- Why would just invest the two mil. You have two million dollars and you say, I'm going to blow that on a music career. Why not just like actually put that into a fucking, in, into like treasury bills or some shit. $4,000 bottles of wine. $4,000 bottles of wine. <laughs> Heidi was going to the mall and dropping twenty to thirty thousand dollars a day. We Bro, how do you drop twenty k on a mall trip? I feel like if I go to the mall and you were like, go buy everything you want, it would be like two grand. Thought we were Jay Z and Beyonce. Oh yeah, makeup stores, makeup stores, and then like shoe, like hype beast shoe areas. Yeah, you go into a store, you buy like the most expensive stuff. Spending was justified because we heard that the planet was going to end in two thousand and twelve. We thought we have to spend this money before the asteroid hits, although the peak of her stupidity was still yet to come. With the money running low, Heidi faked a divorce with her husband, who explained the split was designed to create fresh interest in his wife for a potential British TV project. Divorcing was the only way to keep Heidi's career going, although this failed to do- Getting a divorce to maintain popularity is nuts. Anything. Heidi Montag had to lose every penny before finally learning her lesson. We live too in the moment. People say live in the moment. What well, we do- <laughs> And then you went on a daytime television show. <sighs> Ah! You know, we didn't really think about our futures. All of which could have easily been learned by researching Nicholas K. Yo, why does Nicholas Cage look so fucking old in that? National Treasure had brought his net worth to 150 million, wow. prompting him to spend 25 million on a waterfront primary residence, although Nick also felt the need to buy a holiday home. He'd therefore spend a further $15 million on a Rhode Island countryside mansion, also picking up an 8.5- Your holiday homes in fucking Rhode Island? Yo, if I'm worth a 
150 million dollars and I'm buying a fucking holiday home buy that bitch in like the mountains a million dollar apartment for his weekends away in Las Vegas but what about his weekends in the Bahamas well for that he dropped three million dollars on his own private island but this didn't do anything for his trips to Europe for which he'd spend a further 12.3 million on two medieval castles where he'd spend huge sums on enormous Gatsby stock that's like fuck you money you're going to Europe and buying castles or parties by 2007 Nicholas Cage buys so many homes dude that's like half of every famous person every famous person ever just buys like nine homes which had bought 15 different houses where he'd keep his 26 different vehicles including four yachts nine Rolls Royces and a nearly three million dollar vintage Bugatti although this wasn't as old as his $276,000 dinosaur skull kept next to a bookshelf holding a $150,000 Superman comic throughout the right, house buying a dinosaur skull is kind of badass owning owning a fucking actual dino skull is sick. Has lived a $150,000 pet octopus, an $80,000 two headed snake, and a pair of albino king cobras that set him back 150 grand. To add a cherry on top of the cake, Nick purchased his own extravagant gravesite for a price of 40,000, finally concluding his crazy spend. Right, he spent he spent more money on a two headed snake than on his own grave. Ning spree just months before the global financial crisis. The real market crashed and I couldn't get out in time. At around the same time, he began receiving fewer high paying roles and with six different loans on his Bel Air mansion, plus mortgages on every other property, Nicolas Cage was headed toward bankruptcy. By 2009, he owed a further 6.2 million in unpaid taxes, forcing him to sell almost everything, most of which at a loss. Wow. His $15 million Rhode Island mansion resold for 9.5 million, while his $276,000 Using 6.5 million a dinosaur skull was taken by the government after they discovered it was originally stolen. When they no! They wouldn't refund him? The government said that they needed it back. I gave it to him, but I never got my money back. Nick launched a $20 million lawsuit. Imagine the Mongolian government hits you up and says, that's actually our skeleton skull. My manager stating, Cage discovered that he is now forced to sell major assets and investments at a significant loss and is faced with huge tax liabilities. Although his manager clapped back by claiming he advised Cage against buying a Gulfstream jet, against buying and owning a flotilla of yachts, against buying and owning a squadron of Rolls Royces and against buying millions of dollars in jewelry and art. The lawsuit was eventually dismissed as ridiculous. Buying jewelry though is less of a bad financial decision than buying cars. Because if you're buying like gold jewelry, even if you're blowing money on it, it still maintains its value. Whereas the second you buy a car and drive it or the second you buy a boat and use it, it immediately is worth less money. Unless it's like a genuine collector's item. Like if you buy a car and drive it off the lot, it has just instantaneously lost value. You could resell the car to other people. Yeah, but it's not going to gain value. Like you could theoretically buy a Cuban gold link and then 10 years down the line when you sell it, it's worth more. But if you just keep driving your car, it's only going to get less valuable. What if the gold market goes down? Nah, that's unlikely. Forcing Nick to take on low quality acting roles purely to avoid bankruptcy. It may not have been blue chip, but it was still work. When asked how much has money driven your work choices, Nick stated there are times when it's more of a factor than not, before adding, I had this pride thing where I wanted to work my way through anything, which Nicolas Cage has since done quite successfully, uh, unlike Randy. Yeah, he had a good show recently. Did you guys see uh, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent? Dude, that was a fucking great movie. And insanity. I'm back! Who is this? Unlike Randy Quaid, who gave up Hollywood to chase conspiracy, bankruptcy, and all-round insanity. I'm back! By appearing in Independence Day, Brokeback Mountain, and every National Lampoon movie, Randy Quaid became a multi- Oh my god, I do know this guy. In air. I've earned approximately $40 million throughout my career. However, despite winning a Golden Globe and being nominated for an Oscar, Randy's career came to a screeching halt halfway through 2009. Why? Gary the tennis coach? Well, it began after he and his wife were arrested for trying to use a fake car to pay a $10,000 hotel bill after which both refused to appear in court. After the case eventually settled, Randy and his wife were once again arrested 
good. This time for squatting inside a vacant house they'd previously owned. However, things only got weirder from here. Randy and his wife began to claim they were being chased by a group called Star Whackers who were trying to kill Hollywood celebrities. How many people do you know personally who have died suddenly and mysteriously in the past five years? While also claiming the group was somehow controlling their finances. If things keep going the way they are yeah. and we don't do something about it to expose these people, yeah. my wife and I will be out on the street. And we will, okay. we will be, we'll have nothing to eat. Okay, okay. that's how okay. bad it is. As a solution, Randy fled to Canada, where he'd begin to upload his conspiracies to YouTube. YouTube shorts, Hollywood actor to YouTube shorts maker. Whoa. Reckoning is nigh. Wake up. After which he was arrested for a third time whilst trying to sneak back into America. The Oscar nominated actor and his wife in jail this morning after being arrested at the Canadian border in Vermont. Exactly where Randy's 40 million went isn't entirely clear. However, Kelly Rutherford has been extremely open about how she spent her fortune on lawyers. After gaining international stardom for appearing in Gossip Girl, Kelly had two kids with a German man who wasn't a US citizen. The couple divorced in 2009 and began to argue about custody, with a judge ruling the kid should live with their father in Europe, as he wasn't permitted to return to America. Because he can't come into the US, the children have to be in now France. Yes. The situation was so strange and unique, Kelly spent every penny she had- Why are we going to fucking defill on this one? That's the last motherfucker I'm going to when I'm fucking struggling with some- some fucking custody of my child type shit. Trying to regain custody. It's cost you what, about two and a half million dollars already? It's cost me spend? everything I've ever made, my everything. And as a result, she filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy midway through the court case, having assets worth only 24000 compared to liabilities totaling $2 million. On top of this, Kelly owed more than 350,000 in back taxes, 25,000 in Amex charges, and had a monthly income of just under $1,300. Although despite spending everything she'd ever earned, her efforts failed to impact the court's final choice. Gossip Girl star Kelly Rutherford stunned and fighting back tears after losing a bitter custody battle today in New York Supreme Court. Kelly's spending was out of complete necessity, whereas Johnny Depp lost his PhD. Oh, Dr. Phil lost his PhD. Spending 650 million was nothing but complete stupidity. In 2012, he was yeah. Well, the the thing with Johnny Depp though is like he was dumb, financially stupid, but like he still nails massive roles. Listed as the world's highest paid actor by the Guinness Book of Records, although despite was he earning really 900 million dollars over a 30. Oh, because yeah, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. What else was Johnny Depp in? Oh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Edward Scissorhands. Alice in Wonderland, Nightmare on Elm Street, all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, Corpse Bride, Rango. Oh, he was a voice actor. God, he was in not as many movies as I thought he was. And the money so poorly, Conan O'Brien joked that he must have gotten financial advice from Nicolas Cage. Similar to Cage, Depp purchased 14 different properties, including his own Bahamian- But like, why? Like, you're not- If you buy 14 houses, you're not even gonna go. You're not even gonna go to some of those houses in, like, multiple years. You buy a $20 million house, all of them are $20 million homes, right? Like, you're- You're definitely not visiting nine of those homes a year. Private island, multiple countryside- Go to a hotel, rent a fucking Airbnb. Mansions, and a $60 million village in France. Although it was Johnny Depp's day-to-day -day expenses that might have been even crazier. A 2017 lawsuit revealed he was burning two $2 million a month on 200,000 for a private jet, 150,000 on security for himself and his family. But that's not burning. 300,000 on staff, including 40 full time employees, See, and 30,000 on wine, sense. which was confirmed during his trial with Amber Heard. However, Johnny Depp's craziest purchase was when he spent $3 million on his friend Hunter S. Thompson's funeral by firing his ashes out of a rocket like cannon. Just like Nicolas Cage, Johnny Depp tried to sue his management company, TMG, although they'd respond with their own lawsuit, stating Depp chose time and again to ignore TMG and all of his other advisors. Depp truly has no one but himself to blame for his current financial and personal circumstances. I made Sebastian. Oh, that just fucking randomly ended. That was a good video, though.